أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي نقبل قلوبنا بأنوار المحبة الألمية وأكمل لنا ديننا ببلاية المرتزلية وتم نعمته علينا بهداية الهيدلية ونسلي ونسلم على سيد من خلق المؤلن الحق بالحق حبيب إلهنا وتبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته التيبين التاخرين المعصومين الخداة المهديين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يوم إدابتهم إلى يوم الدين اللهم كن بليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وبارلا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرض كتبا وتمتعه فيها تبيلا صلوات على محمد وعلى محمد Brothers and sisters in Iman Salaam Alaykum Salaam Before I get into the lecture and the topic of the lecture I would just like to take a minute to remember all of those Mu'mineen as are those of Abba Abdullah Hussain who used to be in these majalises over the years and this year they are not amongst us here on this earth plane but I have a yaqeen and a certainty that these majalises of Imam Hussein are taking place at the same time in the other world <coughs> and all of those mean that were part of these majalises and used to attend them, and they have left this world they are now with Mawla Hussein on the other side and Bibi Park and Amin al muminin and paying their respects over there but let's remember them and also remember ourselves when we pass from this world and for everyone, even not from just his majalises but your own fathers, mothers, grandparents, uncles, aunties, cousins, brothers, sisters anybody that you know who has passed away and only once, only once whether it was through ikhlas or niyyah or whether it was through any other means just once in their life they said sallallahu alayhi wa abdullah and they have passed away from this world let's remember all of them with a surah fatah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen that we are able to be here again another year and to serve at this door and this fortunate the Prophet mentioned is not for you but it's for me. It truly is for me that Alhamdulillah the Tawfiq is here because this door is the best door in the world. There is no other door like this door. So to be able to serve in any manner, it doesn't matter. Honestly, I've, I've said this over the years, you've all heard it from me and inshallah. You don't get tired of me saying these things year in year out. But it doesn't matter how you may think it is small and insignificant. What you did for Imam Hussein. It really doesn't matter. I mean, it's the smallest thing the, because Allah says, When they've asked to do tafsir of this ayah, they say, What is misqala? What is the size of this? They say, A mustard seed. So, a mustard seed that you do for Imam Hussein at his door, even if you just give a mustard seed. In the way of Hussein, you will see on the other side, this is why Allah says, the Qayla Hisab. Because you will see in the Quran, there are many ayahs that Allah talks about if you give in the way of God, what the recompense is. The Quran. For instance, the very minimum they have written is 10 times. The act that you do, the very minimum is 10 times. Then we have those who give Allah money, lend money. Allah says that there is 700 times. There's no when someone asks the sixth demand, what we do for Imam Hussein, the dirham that we give in the way of Imam Hussein, the money that we give Imam Hussein, what is the recompense for this? Allah says that there is no hisab. 
Why? Because Imam Hussein, what he gave in the way of Allah was the pain of his son. No one asked him to do that. There was no force on him, there was no wajib on him, there was no need for him to give what he gave. But he gave. Unfortunately, we are living in an age where a lot of people, well, I say in the age we are living in, but this has been the way since the very moment Imam Hussein, actually even before he went to Karbala, people were questioning him. You've all heard this, that Abdullah ibn Umar, when he stopped Imam Hussein, he said, where are you going? Imam Hussein said, we are going on this journey. And he said to him, will you join me? He said to him, Imam, that it's got nothing to do with me. You have a, we say now this in the youngsters' terms, you have beef with Yazid. That is, that is between you and him. It's got nothing to do with me. So I'm, no, I'm happy here. I'm doing my, my duties. I'm living in Medina. You go. And he also made fun of Imam Hussein. This is interesting. He made fun of Imam Hussein. When he, not only did he say no to Imam Hussein, but as if to make the situation worse, he also made fun of Imam Hussein before he left. When Imam Hussein left, was about to leave him, he turned around to Imam Hussein. He said to Imam Hussein, isn't it a shame that such a beautiful face like yours would be cut up to pieces in Iraq? So you see, this has started from that movement. And this has spread every year, every year till it's got to our time. They say exactly the same things to us. Don't they make fun of these majalis? Don't they say to you that every year you come, don't you get tired? When will it stop? Have you not cried enough? You see, I just mentioned in the beginning that let's remember all our family members who passed away. I didn't see a single one of you shed a tear. But as soon as we mentioned, Assalamu alaikum ya Abu Abdullah, the tears start to flow. This is a man that was killed 1400 years ago. None of you have ever seen him. So if this is not what we say in Farsi, this is a call it there. If this is not from the heart, then what is it? Is it a show? Don't we have anything better to do than to come to sit here and cry? Are we all, you know, nothing to do? I'm sure we've got better things to do. So this has been placed in us, and this is the question that comes about a lot. And Alhamdulillah, this year Allah has, because this is one of the things that was bothering me. It really was bothering me. I'm, I'm, everyone has asked me this question. I never had an answer for it. But Alhamdulillah, this year through the Karamat of Mullah, I have an answer for this, and it has come to me. And this question is this, why us? Why us? Why are we Shias? Why have we been chosen amongst 7 billion people on this planet at this very time? Why are we here? Has it got to do with our ethnic background? No, I mean if you all trace your family trees, you will go back, they were not probably even Muslims. Your great, 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 great grandfathers, they were probably not even Muslims. They were probably Hindus or fire worshippers, like in my case from Iran, the Zoroastrians, you know. So they were not even Muslims. So is it because of our ethnic, this has been passed down through generations? No. If it's to do with the ethnic of where we were born, or what family we were born into, how do you answer those people who convert to Shias? Because they come from families that some don't even know who their fathers are. So how are they Shias? How are they crying for Imam Hussein? How are they doing martyr for Imam Hussein? So this is a question that comes about a lot. And then I said, inshallah, over the next few nights, I will attempt my best to answer this question as to why us? We have to turn to Quran for every single answer. And Alhamdulillah, the answer from this is in the Quran. We will see this in the story of Hazrat Ibrahim. First of all, Hazrat Ibrahim, as you all know, he had children in a very, very old age. <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs him in the Quran to leave his homeland and to go towards where? Mecca. Mecca was what in those days? It was a desert. There was nothing there. Because Allah says in the Quran that Hazrat Ibrahim, when he tells Hazrat Ibrahim, to go there, he turns around to Allah and he says, Vivadin, be that way. This is a valley that there's not even any vegetation. There's nothing growing. Yet you want me to go there for what reason? Allah says, because I want you to build a house, construct a house for me. Now, this Kaaba was there before. It's not as if there was a plot of land 
And he, Allah appointed him to just plot of land and said, right, start building. No, there was a foundation there because from Hazrat Adam's time, the house was the Abba Levate, and this was the first house on this earth. But in the floods of Noah, when most of the world was flooded, was flooded the Kaaba was destroyed, but the foundation was still there. So Hazrat Ibrahim at a very old age, he takes his son, he takes his wife, they go to this desert. Why? From the command of Allah. They build this Kaaba. When they finish building this Kaaba, Hazrat Ibrahim says to Allah, now that we've finished it, what is the recompense for us? Because he says to Allah, Rabbaj anni muqeem as salat wa min zuriyati rabbana wa taqabbal dua Oh Allah, accept from us this house that we have built for you, accept from us and make me and my progeny till the day of judgment those people who establish praise. Question is here, why does Hazrat Ibrahim say to God, accept from me this building? Because this, he hasn't done it of his own accord. Then he said, look, I want to do something nice for God. Let me build a house for him. This is something nice for God. And then inshallah, God will accept from me. No, he is acting on a command directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to build this house. Then he says to Allah, now that I've built it, accept from me. Accept what? This is the question, accept what? Accept, accept some black bricks and a, and, and a square rectangular building? <coughs> no, accept from me this effort and this devotion and this answer to your <coughs> instruction that I have listened to you. In return, you make this town a town that is striving with trade and business and with good food. This is all in the Quran. Then he talks about, like I said, he says to Allah, make me of those established prayers. Now you all know that the Kaaba was not the Qibla for praise. It was Masjid al-Aqsa. So why is Ibrahim talking about the establishment of prayer and accepting this house from me at the time when this was not even meant to be a Qibla for Namaz? And when did this du'a of Ibrahim get accepted? When did this du'a of Ibrahim get accepted? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you see this is the thing, for us time is an issue, time is an issue for us, but for Allah time is not an issue, there is no time scale for Allah, Allah is not sat there with the clock in front of him and things right now is, you know, 12 hours have passed, no, there is no time issue for Allah, that time for Allah passes very quickly, you will see a story in the Quran where a person tells to Abraham Ibrahim that show me how Allah comes back the dead from, from the graves, so he says this guy, Allah made him die, and he was dead for 100 years. When he comes back to life, when it was asked, how many years were you asleep for? How many years were you dead? He says, yawmin or ba'ad yawmin. I was asleep for a day or? Or even like the Ashab al Kaf, they were asleep for 300 years. But when they woke, they thought they just had been asleep for a year. So time does not have a limit with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says the answer of this dua of yours that you want me to accept is that from this house a man will be born inside this very house after his birth this house will become the temple of all mu'mineen so until Ali ibn Abi Talib was not born in this house this house did not become a qibla which is why Allah says to Rasulullah while he was praying in Masjid al Medina that he, Jibra'il came and turned his face towards the Qibla. Allah says in that verse that I am now pointing you towards the Qibla that I know will make your heart pleased because this is the Qibla that your Ali was born from. <laughs> then it gets to this point here, and this is the point I want you to please pay no attention to. He then says to Ibrahim, now this, uh, this is not going to be sad, this was in the desert, there's no one there. He says to Ibrahim, فَأَزِّنْ لِلنَّاسَ بِالْحَجْ <coughs> Now Ibrahim turns around to God and he says, where do you want me to call? Who do you want me to call? Where do I call? Even if I stand on top of this Kaaba and say to everybody, come for Hajj, there is no one here to listen to me. So what are you asking me to do? <coughs> See? It's crazy, isn't it? What's he asking you to do? Call the people to Hajj? Who are people? Where are you going? So Allah says to him, Alaykal Azam wa ilayyan talaq. You make the call, I will spread the message. 
Now, did Allah say to him, call people to Hajj for that year, or the next year, or the next decade? Does it say in the Quran? No. He says, call the people to pilgrimage from this moment till the day this world comes to an end. Then Imam says that how Allah responded to Ibrahim was this, that we will give the call, the answer to this call of yours, fi aslaw al rijal wa arham al nisa. We will place this message in the loins of the men and the womb of the women. So what does this mean? That means, inshallah tomorrow night, we'll talk about this a little bit more. There are 12 worlds that we will have to go through. Some of them we have already passed, some of them are ahead of us. Inshallah tomorrow night, I will tell you what these 12 worlds are. But one of the worlds out of these 12 is when we are light. We were light. Because our creation was not just here, we were, not, we were physically created here, but our existence was before we came to this earth. And this is why you will see some religions and some spirituality, they talk about incarnation, about keep coming back, coming back. Yeah, so we believe in this as well. <coughs> see, we were there, then we were incarnated into these bodies. Now, Hadith says this, Rivayat says this, traditions from Imam say this, that how many times you go to Hajj, is how many times you said Labbaik to Ibrahim in that world. So, what does that mean? That means when we were in that world, when Ibrahim said Azzin in Hajj, everybody come to Hajj, we heard that and we said Labbaik. Labbaik. So how many times we said Labbaik, Allah says right for them when they are born a Hajj. This is why when we go to Hajj, one of the armors of Hajj is this. La bayt Allahumma la bayt. Yes? So this is the very delicate point. That this call and this message, there is two sides to this. One is the caller, i.e. the bali of Allah, the representative of Allah, the khalif of Allah. The other side of this party is the one who spreads the message, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why when Sayyid al-Shuhada on the afternoon of Ashura, he stood there and he said, Hal min nasirin yansurni? Hal min mughisin yuqisuni? Hal min dhaqin yadunku an harama rasulillah? We heard that call in the other world. Allah said to Hussein, you make the call, you leave the message with me. This is why you will see year upon year upon year upon year, the majalis of Hussein expands and expands and expands, just as the same as the call to Azan. In the call of the Azan, if you want to plot it, the timing of the Azan throughout the entire world. Every single minute of the 24 hours, there is one part of the world that is Azan being said. The same as the Majalis of Hussein today, on the day of Ashura, there is not one part of this earth that does not hold the remembrance of Hussein ibn Ali. So Hussein ibn Ali made the call 1400 years ago. Allah placed that message in the hearts of the Mu'mineen that every single one of us that came to this life, we were born with the gun of Hussein in our hearts. You will hear in some majalises they say that this gun of Hussein, the tears of Hussein, has been given to us when our mothers were breastfeeding and they were crying. This gun came, no, this is not right. The gun of Hussein was placed before we weren't even. Now, when Imam says, Hal min nasir yan surni, is he asking for help? Is he asking for help? On the face of it, he is accepting, he is asking for help, on the face of it. But when you look at it, this asking is the same asking of Allah in the Quran subhanahu wa Allah says this in the Quran. Man dhalladhi yakrudullahu qardan hasana. Is there anybody to give Allah some money, lend Allah some money? Does Allah need our money? No. Does Hussein ibn Ali need our help? No. That asking for help is they are helping us. 
So when we come to these majalises, we are getting help. <laughs> we cannot help Imam Hussein. How can we help Imam Hussein? How can we lend money to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By doing so, we are the one who is gaining. You will see in the Quran the story of Hazrat Yusuf that Allah says, Ahsan al Qisas. This is the most beautiful story. The story of Yusuf was this that, aren't you all heard of this? I'm going to summarize it very quickly. But the story of Yusuf was this that his brothers were jealous of him because the father paid a lot of attention to him and he was also very beautiful. So they decided one day to throw him in the well. Now look at this, my youngest, especially my youngest, I want you to pay attention to this point here. Hazrat Yusuf had 12 brothers, yet they did what they did to him. Why? Because they didn't, weren't loyal to him, there was no loyalty. So we don't need numbers when they say to us Shias, there's not many of you. We don't look at numbers. Whereas you look at Imam Hussein, he had one brother, Abu al-Fazl al-Abbas. But he was very loyal. Yet those 12 brothers did that to him, to the Wali of Allah, that Yusuf was the Wali of Allah. Yet you look what Abu al-Fazl did to Imam Hussein. So it is not in the numbers. Anyway, they throw Yusuf in the world and then you all know the story, the caravan came and took him out. It is written that for 40 years, Yusuf did not see his father Ya'qub. Ya'qub did not see Yusuf. It says in the Quran that Ya'qub cried so much that his eyes went blind. So when Ali Sunnah say to us, crying is shed in his arm. This is the Quran. <laughs> and this is the thing Allah says Ya'qub had 100% yaqeen and certainty that Yusuf will one day come back. Yet he still cried for 40 years from the separation of Yusuf. So Yusuf took upon himself a lot of calamities, bala. 40 years of separation from his, that's one of them. Then when he got to the house of that woman in Egypt, all the stories of that happened with that woman, he then says to Allah, look, I am stuck. He was living with that woman for seven years. This is what people don't realize. They think, oh, it was a one-off event and that was it, you know, he escaped her. And no, seven years he lived with her. This is why then he turns around to Allah when they throw him into jail. He said to Allah, Allah, as sage, no, I have a layer in my man yet. Oh Allah, the prison is better for me than living in that palace. Look at the lengths he went to to escape the sin. Then he says, Allah, keep me in the prison. When he went into the prison, he was a cellmate with two other people. Those two other people were very close to the king. One of them was his personal wine pourer. One of them says to Yusuf that I have seen a dream last night and it's perplexed me. I don't know the meaning to it, but because you look like a truthful person, you are Yusuf and you have said this, tell me the interpretation of this dream. So Hazrat Yusuf tells both of them, they both had a dream. Hazrat Yusuf interprets the dream for him. And to the one that was going to be the personal servant of the king, he said that you will be pouring wine for the king. Then he says to those two, when they got released, he says to one of them, now that you're being released and you go to the king, mention me to the king as well so that I can come out of this prison. Allah says here that shaitan made him say this. Why? Because he got his, he asked for a hajjah from a person. He should have turned around to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, Oh Allah, bring me out of this prison. But because he mentioned it to a person, Allah says that we made that person forget Yusuf for another seven years. So you see, my brothers and sisters, anything you need, do not ask the khalq of Allah, the creation of Allah. Go directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this guy comes out, one day the king says to him that I had this dream that's perplexing me, that I've dreamt about seven lean cows and seven fat cows. What does this mean? He then remembers Yusuf and he goes, ah, oh, there was a cellmate in prison with us by the name of Yusuf. He's very good at interpreting dreams. So Yusuf comes out. He says to the king, this dream of yours means that one year, seven years you will have an abundance. Seven years there will be famine. In the years of abundance, only use the wheat what you need, store the rest for those seven years. So the king makes him the head of the treasury, the Khazan. So Yusuf comes out. Now, Imam Sadr says 
Then the Lord is born. That because of the calamities that Yusuf went through, Allah did mercy upon an entire nation. Because the Bali of Allah went through difficulties, Allah, because of some of those difficulties, recompensed Yusuf by taking away the calamity from the nation of Egypt. Now you will know the Egyptian nation at that time was the largest civilization on this planet. So Allah, because of the difficulties that his Khalif has gone through, he took away the famine from an entire nation. And this is what Allah does for us through Hussein ibn Ali. The calamities that Hussein ibn Ali went through, a'zamun musibah. We read this in Ziyarat al-Ashura. Musibatan ma'a'zama wa raziyatuha fi islam fi jami'i ahl al-zamadat. Through what Hussein ibn Ali went through, the calamities that he went through, Allah then gives us that mercy. So we are fortunate to be here at this door of Hussein. That the mercy of Allah is only through this door. That what Imam Hussein went through, it comes at this door. We will see this again because I like to confirm everything I say. That you know there is no room for doubt. We will see this in Hadith al -Kisar. Five people gather together in the Hadith al -Kisar. Jibra'i came and made them six. They gathered up in a place. Amin al muminin says to Rasulullah, Tell me, what is the point? of this gathering and then when people talk about this gathering what will they gain now look they were the five in there but they are saying what will they gain they don't talk about themselves all they are concerned about is what will our shias gain and then he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send his rahmah onto them until they separate. So this shows that holding majalises, being in these majalises, the mercy of Allah is onto you until you leave this majalis. One year is enough then, isn't it? If we turn up just for one year, do a lot of crying, do a lot of martyr, do a lot of zadari, we will get that mercy of Allah, won't we? So that's enough. Why do we have Shabbat Qadr every year? Layla Tulqa, Khairu in al It is better than a whole lifetime, a thousand months, almost 80 odd years. So that's enough. If we do one Layla Tulqa properly, then that is enough for us. So why do we come back every year? Why do we fast every year? Why do we do the Allah's of the Yat of Why? Because every year the Rahmah and the mercy that comes is different. The same way as you have a birthday every year and you get different presents every year, this is exactly the same thing here. That the Majalis of Hussein, the mercy of Hussein is different every single year. Why? Because every year, the Imam al Ma'sum, who is the Imam of that time, gives out a different mercy every year. So now the Imam al Ma'sum, that is the Sahib al Azhar, he is the one that holds all of these majalises, his mercy changes every year. Because he sees the three hours that nobody else on this world is able to see. One of the great ulama says that one year I asked my teacher, his alim, that is there a riyazat? Is there something that I can do that Allah will open my eyes to the events of the day of Ashura? He said to me, Yes, there's a certain riyazat that if you do it for 40 days, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Ashura, He will show you what happened apart from the three hours. What was that three hours? When Imam Hussein fell off to the horse and until Shem sat on his chest. Those three hours, nobody in this world can see because why? Because they do not have the strength and the capacity to cope with that scene. But only Imam Zaman sees that scene every year on Ashura. This is why he says, oh, my grandfather Hussein, I will cry for you day and night. And if I run out of tears, then I will cry blood for you. Imam Zaman's heart is full of grief these two months and eight days. 
He is put the nasib that in him. We are connected to Imam Zaman because we proclaim to be his Shias. And they have said Shia to Nakhulibu min fadilati natira. That our Shias are created from the rest of our clay. Be happy for our happiness, but also be sad for our sadness. Allah says in the Quran, a person who has musibat, what happens to them? So, every year when you have the Qam, the Musibat of Imam Hussein, Allah says every year that He sends His Salams to you. Does this tally up in any of our Hadiths? Sallallahu ala al-Baqeena ala al -Hussein. The sixth Imam says the Salam of God to those who cry for Hussein. So, Salawat from your Rabbihim wa Rahmat. Rahmat comes here. This is why Hussein ibn Ali is known as Babullah Rahmatin Basa'a. Verse at this point. These are the ones who are guided. Please recite the Salawat of Muhammad. In his time, he was a very grand alim. So much so, he was the head of all of the ulama of Qom in his time. This is his maqam. It is for me. You might be heard of him in some of the books and the hadiths and so on and so forth. Every year, he would hold 10 days, the first ashra, majlis of his house. And as you can imagine, the best reciters would want to come and recite there. And he says one year he asked the reciter to come and recite. And the reciter says that on the first day when I turned up at the door, Mizai Bumi was standing there, I said to him, what musibah do you want me to recite today in this majlis? He said, I want you to recite the musibah of Ali al Asad." He said, I said to him, Mirza, today is the first of Muharram. We normally do not recite this Masa'im till the sixth or the seventh of Muharram. So let me recite something else. He said, no, this is my Majlis al -Azhar. If you want to recite, I am asking you to recite the Musibat of Ali al -Azhar. So he says, I recited the Musibat of Ali al -Azhar. The second day I came back to go on the Majlis. I said to him, Mirza, today what do you want me to recite? He said, I want you to today to recite the Musibat of Ali al -Azhar. So he goes, this is Mirza, I can't argue with him. So he goes, I went on the mimba and I recited the musibah of Ali al -Azhar. So he goes, the third day when I came in the morning, I said to him, Mirza, today would you want me to do the masaib of Ali al -Azhar? He said, today I also want you to recite the masaib of Ali al -Azhar. He said, I said to Mirza, how many days do you want me to recite the masaib of Ali al -Azhar? He says, oh man, I want you to recite the whole 10 days the masaib of Azhar. He goes, I said to Mirza, Mirza, why Ali al -Azhar? Why do you want the whole 10 days for Ali al -Azhar? He said, what can I do? I have a lot of mushkil in my life. I have a lot of problems in my life. This is why I want you to recite for the whole 10 days the Masaib of Azhar. Why do they say this to us? They say this to us. The greatest one I must say to us, please remember these things. That if you have any mushkil in your life, that doesn't matter what you have tried, every door is close to you. Wherever you turn is a dead end. They say to us, make a niyat that if you have a mushkil, three days you will hold the azadari in your home. And in those three days, it doesn't matter how many people come. One, two, three, yourself, your wife, your children, your neighbors, whoever comes, it doesn't matter. They haven't talked about the numbers here. It is not the numbers that is important, it's the majlis that is important. They say to us, our ulama, make the niyat that you will hold the majlis for three days. And in these three days, you will recite the masaib of Asta. And this is the killing part here, that in this majlis, you will only serve milk. I don't know what the Qam of Askhal did to Hussein. <laughs> what did it do to Hussein? 
Hussein is Mushkil Kushah e Alam. He is the son of Haydar Karra. But Hussein himself fell into Mushkil. <laughs> Imam Hussein has said many words after every qam that he suffered. At the body of Akbar, he has said some words. At the body of Abbas, he has said some words. At the body of Qasim, he has said some words. Every body that he went to, he has said a few words that show the calamity of Hussein. But there is only one time he has said these words. And this is amazing that our Imam Hussein, our Mawla Kainat, has said these words. Because why do I say it is amazing that he has said these words? Because we say these words in another way. Every Ashura we say it. Ya Laytana, Kunna Ma'akum. Oh, how we wish we were with you, Ya Hussein. But now Hussein has turned that around and he has said these words. Laytakun, fi yawma Ashura, jami antanzuruni. Oh, how I wish all of you Shias of mine were there on the day of Ashura. To do what? Just to watch me. Watch you doing what Hussein. Kaifa astasti latifli. See how I ask for water from these enemies for my child. How did you ask for water, Hussein? He held the six month old towards this enemy. And he said, Illam tarhamuni, farhamu hadan razi. If you do not have any mercy on me, at least have mercy on this six month old. Allahu Akbar. Umar ibn Sa'ad said to Harmala, Harmala, what are you waiting for? Why don't you answer Hussein? Harmala said that I looked it down in my armory. I had not brought any arrows for a six month old child. All my arrows were for adult people. So you know, I was looking down to see what arrow to pick out. Umar ibn Sa'ad said, take the three headed one. Answer Hussein's call like this. Then Imam Hussein said oh, that there is no water coming from this enemy. Then he says these words, and these words are a killer. He says, Manu, Manu ila ibn al Mustafa. Do men that on Hussein. Do men that on the grandson of Mustafa. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. The come of Asqa burnt, burnt Imam Hussein's existence. His whole existence was burnt. That they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his condolences down to when this come happened, Allah Akbar. Now Imam Hussein is carrying the body of his child. He does not know what to do with this body. The enemies have written this that he kept walking to the near to the tent and then he kept walking back seven times. Hussein did this. Allah Akbar. Eventually he came behind the tent. He dug a small grave. He buried the body of Asqar. This is why they say when Rabah, when she came back to Karbala on the 40th day, that some of the women from Bani Asad, when they went to say condolences to Hazrat Zainab and Hazrat Rabah and Hazrat Umm Kulsum, the older women from the Qabila of Bani Asad said to them, any one of you who has a small child, do not take that with you. Leave those children with us. We will look after them because if Rabah sees these children, she will not be able to cope. I have seen this myself in my very own eyes at Karbala, that some of the women who come from the villages around Karbala, they will not feed their children, they will not breastfeed their children while they are in the shrine of Imam Hussein. They will not give water to the children while they are in the shrine of Hussein because they say this is not the adab that we do this. <laughs> يا رب الأسرة بحق أسرة إيش في سفر الحسين لزهور الحجة السلام علينا وعلى عباد الله الصالحين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله